Yeah. I'm George Reister, former NFL player, played at the University of Oregon, uh, host of the Unafraid Show and unafraidshow.com. I've been a uh, commentator on ESPN. I've been a host on Fox Sports One, written at all the sites that you uh, read about sports and just an opinionist on all things about sports and then expert on all things in life, just in general. Yeah, always right, they're never wrong. <laughs> I'm making this Can I Be Vulnerable video because we as men, we grew up with this perception of how manhood was, fatherhood was and all this. And it's important that we actually talk about the things that men miss and the things that actually really make us men as opposed to the things that we were taught by our neighborhood or by our friends or the things that we taught, thought weren't cool actually really are. And they're the things that are dope and really make you a man. Therapy. Yeah, I've been to therapy. And when I went, it wasn't necessarily voluntarily. <laughs> um, I was playing in Jacksonville. My son's mom, my oldest son's mom was pregnant. And I thought that my life was getting ready to end. Like, I was like, I done messed up. Like, I came from a two-parent home. I grew up in church. Like, this is everything that I did not want in right. life. And so uh, I remember, I forget which game it was, but we were playing. And the night before, we were staying in the hotel. You know, the team staying in the hotel uh, the night before the games. And I couldn't sleep. Like, I thought I, like I was having trouble breathing, all this stuff. I called up the trainer. Trainer stayed with me all night. Like all night, gave me an inhaler, all kind of stuff. This is how cold the NFL is though. So uh, we had a game the next day. I'm having heart, what I think are heart troubles, all of this stuff. And then, so they say, you know what? Come play in the game and then we'll send you to the hospital after. And I'm like, what? That's a product to put on the field, you know that? <laughs> So, so anyways, so the next day, Monday, they sent me to the hospital, echocardiogram, stress test, every type of heart test that you could ever imagine. And then they come back clean. They're like, yo, it's not your heart. It's not, not your breathing. I don't know what's going on. And um, I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. Something is going on. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to die if this keeps happening. What's going on? And they finally were like, after a day, they said, you know what? It's probably in your head. You're probably having some sort of anxiety. I was like, what? And you know, growing up in a black community, I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. Most of my family lived down there. And it was, you know, black, black people, you just learn how to deal with your problems, your troubles. White people go to therapy because they can't handle their stuff. So anyway, so I end up in therapy and the therapist, she gave me a prescription for Xanax, but I'm not a person who likes to take drugs, so I wouldn't take them. But uh, she also taught me some techniques to deal with the, the anxiety because it was just something that was going on in me physically that I couldn't control. Like it was just occasionally. So I liken it to like if, if your adrenaline has a cap on it. Mine would just occasionally just fly off occasionally and then you got adrenaline flying all over the place, but your body's in a relaxed state. So you get all jittery and all that stuff. You think, so? yeah. So I learned how to deal with it. So now when any time that happens, I'm like, OK, I recognize what it is. I know how to deal with it. And then also breaking the stigma of hold up. Is there something wrong with me? So that was the first time I went to therapy. But then also I've been to therapy for I've been to marriage therapy with my with my wife. I've uh, been to individual therapy because as an NFL player, your transition out. I mean, I would imagine it's the same for college players too. your transition out is tough because your entire life has been run and set for you from the time you were in kindergarten all the way up till then, like your schedule is set. And then one day somebody is like, you know what? You're not good enough anymore, essentially, yeah. because there's no halfway. There's no transition. You're either in the you're either in the club or you're out of the club. Like there's no in between. No. And so that's tough for people to deal with. And I was depressed and I didn't even know it. So I started working with the NFL Players Association right. and they had this company called IDEO, which is a think tank, which helped develop the programs that are the trust now. So the brain and body, figuring out like your wellness programs, the transition programs, all these things. And when I was in there, they started asking me questions and started all this stuff started coming out that I didn't even know that I was feeling. Right. 
Turns out I wasn't watching pro football. I was still watching college, but I wasn't watching pro because it just didn't feel it hurt. right. Yeah. It hurt. And I didn't even know it. And so my experience with therapy was great. I, it was tough opening up to somebody initially yeah. because you're like, hold up, there's a trust factor. Yeah. And then there's a, yeah. And you're an athlete. So you're like, listen, I am the master of my body. I can leap tall buildings with a single yeah. bound. I'm mentally tough. I can play in two degrees, 102 degrees, play hurt, hands, yeah. hurt yeah. whatever. So you think you're mentally strong but you're not actually as mentally fit as you are physically fit. Exactly. Like you were just a man just walking around with just thoughts and ideas yeah. with, no, with no real plan. Yeah. My own personal healing has impacted my personal relationships in, a, in a, like a big time way. Like I got not even expect it. Like, so it's obviously impacted my relationship with my, with my wife and you know our communication because we were older when we got married so we were set in our ways and learning how to coexist and build something with somebody else but with the kids like it's been crazy like just my, my, my sons especially because i grew up okay my dad he had a terrible relationship with his father but my dad was better than his dad and he i was always with him told me love me you know but it wasn't necessarily as touchy feely, all of that. And we didn't necessarily talk about our feelings. And now with my kids, we talk about how we feel. We talk about, uh, talk about what's going on, all of these things, because I've learned that the real strength in manhood is not in, you know, never crying. Oh, I gotta be tough. I gotta be hard. The real strength is actually in understanding your problems, understanding why you do certain things and how those things impact the rest of your life and being able to move on. Like that's where the strength is. Like the strength is not in just, oh, I don't, I don't cry, I don't this, I don't that. No, the strength is in taking these obstacles, understanding how you feel, how to deal with them, creating a plan to deal with them in a positive way, right. and then moving on. Like that's where the strength is at. The thing that scares me the most probably has to be failing my kids. So I have four kids right now, one on the way. And when I say failing them, I mean not setting them up in a position to be successful in life. And that doesn't mean giving them everything. I mean like emotionally, spiritually, like just not having them fully prepared as people to move on and do great things out in the world. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna switch my answer because I think that where I just said that my biggest, uh, that what I was afraid of is actually my biggest fear. Okay. And what I'm afraid of is just, I, I guess just not doing enough. Like just making, like I wanna fulfill my purpose. I wanna be, do great things out in the world, help other people, inspire people, and like have a great life my, myself. So I guess my biggest fear would be just just not living up to, to my purpose and being authentic because I grew up in a, in a space to where like a lot of other professional athletes or like just guys in general where like you have a lot of women, you're doing all, you know, you're doing all the wrong things out in life, the things that, that you talked about in music videos and in the locker room, everywhere else that, you know, that macho machismo thing. Yeah. But in reality, like those aren't the things that complete you. Like it's it's uh, kind of like I remember I was watching a, um, it wasn't, I think it was Chris Chris Rock. He had a stand up. He said you got two choices. He said you either got commitment or you got new pussy. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a true ass statement too. Yeah. So and he said that, that commitment is gonna take care of you when you're sick. It's gonna teach you. Uh, kids how to read it's gonna be there for you when you when your mama die when you go through tough times and it's gonna be there for you yeah. but the but but the newness bro that's <laughs> that's just momentary it's bro momentary. you know it's fun you know and, and and then I have to quote quote Wayne on this one well once I come I come to my oh, senses come to my senses post not clarity come on now post not clarity alright number four. Oh, oh speak, speaking of that I just told my uh, daughter, who's 18, she's at LMU now. She's a freshman at LMU. Just told her the other night, I was like, look, 
the dude tells you he loves you either while he's trying to have sex with you during sex or immediately after sex don't believe it, it. don't nah <laughs> he's not speaking clearly at all no it's not about that no he don't even know what he's talking nah, about no, it no. is <laughs> fault right now <laughs> he's cloudy he's still trying to fix some shit out. he's sorry so i believe another quote because I, I collect quotes yeah i know uh, you've seen him on twitter and shit. <laughs> um that a man's weaknesses flow from the same well as his strengths so, so the just things said that yesterday yeah. Day before yesterday, I'm sorry. So, and what that means is the the things that make you great out in the world, like I care about people, want to do the best for people, um, I care about what people think. Sometimes, so it's like all those things that are positive attributes. Sometimes they roll into negativity. So, where I was saying, I didn't used to be authentic. Like, Emma, my wife is all about that. Like, she's like Oprah, Ayanla, been on OWN, all of this stuff. So, like, she's all about this. Living your best life and just being open and honest and transparent. Where that's dangerous on some level because it's like you don't want people to know all the bad things that you've done because you don't want them to judge you. Right. And so that's a space that I lived in. And it actually caused a bunch of uh, problems specifically in my relationships with my sisters my sisters are younger than me so I would lie to my sisters that way they that way when other people around them particularly women I was dating asked them questions or saw them that they didn't yeah. have to lie yeah. that they could just say what I told saw them, them and then that's it. yeah and as they got older and started putting two to two together yeah. and figuring stuff out they were like hold on bro why, why are you lying it? to me yeah you put us in a predicament now. correct and so just repairing those relationships has been like paramount and yeah. repairing the relationships to my with, with, with my family wife kids just everybody right. like even if they're not totally broken or ruined or something like like that you can always be improving you can always be better yeah. and so i love the fact that i can be transparent i love the fact there is nothing better than uh what used to keep me up at night which was, I would be in bed looking at the f oh. and and then wondering like, hold up, hold up, hold up, <laughs> did, I <laughs> yeah. did I erase this call? Yeah. Uh, did I hide my other phone correctly? Right. All this stuff. That light blanket, that's group yeah. chat, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yep. And so and so now I can sleep. My 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 wife can take my phone. I ain't worried about it. I am not worried about it at all. Let's stress man. Yeah. So yes, there are some conversations I would rather her not not see that I have with with my boys because there will be like some y'all really talk like that. But then I realized she got conversations like that with her homegirls. Of course they do. Yeah. That movie Girls Trip is for real, bro. Oh, that's serious, serious. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was like, y'all some nasty mofos, bro. I didn't know y'all acting like y'all all all innocent. Yeah. What does it mean to be a man? A man is somebody who takes care of his responsibilities. He's well read. He's trying to improve himself and the community around him. And like a real man is rich, like not rich in necessarily in terms of dollars, but he's rich in terms of his life. Because if you're out there living authentically, if you're trying to help other people be the best that they can, if you're enriching your community, being there for your kids, taking care of your wife, taking care of your responsibilities. You know, I mean, just something so simple as if you get a ticket, pay your ticket, take care of your ticket, the way your license don't get suspended. Right. Like it's just taking care of your responsibilities as a man, but also like not just the traditional sense of your responsibilities, but your responsibilities are also as a man to take care of your family. Right. That means taking care of your wife. Like it's dope to like black love is dope. Love in general is dope. It's dope to I as a grown man, as a 37 year old man, um, I see other men out there loving on their wife where guys used to be like, oh man, he's a lame. He yeah. doing Nah, man, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's dope. I see you, kid. You know? <laughs> and so I applaud brothers who do that. And just people in general, because, because when you aren't taking care of your responsibilities, if your kids are emotionally 
uh, unstable. If, if, if you're not, if you don't know how your kids feel right. and you don't care about how they feel, then that's a problem. Yeah. So I would say that the biggest thing that I've learned in terms of the uh, kids though, in terms of being a man, is just, I was raised in a place where kids were seen, never heard. And now with, with my kids, they don't run my house. No. But I asked them, how do they feel? What do you think about this? Yeah. Talk about future plans. So we actually have family meetings on the weekends. Right. So we, we talk about the weekend uh, in review, what was tough, what was good, what's up next, uh, what our plans for the family are, and you get to weigh in. Right. Things may not go the way that you think, you might not get what you want, but, but you, get hurt. you are heard. Right. And we take that into consideration. Right. Right. right now, my biggest motivation is my dream, dude. I have, um, so I've been commentating all over the place, been a host, been an opinionist, but I started unafraidshow.com and been able to grow that tremendously. And so that's my biggest motivation now because it's essentially like a second career and taking that and building something great out of that and then taking care of my family, doing all that. I mean, that's, that's it right there. The most important thing to me is being the man that I just talked about. Non healing is non-negotiable. Growth is necessary for greatness. And then that's it. Any last words? My final thought is to everybody out there, be bold. Be bold. Be willing to stand up for what you believe. Be willing to do the right thing because it's the right thing. Even if your family, friends, everybody else don't think it's cool, doing the right thing is always the right thing. And be bold enough to, to have the life that you want. Even if your friends, even if your boys, even if your girlfriends are like, no, that's lame, that's this, that's that. No, man, taking care of your family, doing the right thing, showing up every day to do the right things is the most important thing.